Hi, Brother Roy here, Old School Bible Baptist Ministries. Uh, listen, with uh, everything that's going on with the war in Israel and the conflict with the, uh, uh, the Arabs in the region, uh, this is a subject that has come up a lot uh, about whose land is that? And uh, did God really mean what he said when he promised that? land to Abraham and his seed. And what you're going to find is there's a lot of people that um, have not rightly divided. And there's actually two seeds in that whole thing that was promised to Abraham. And if you don't see that, and if you don't rightly divide that, uh, you're going to try to, again, smush everything together and you come out with a wrong interpretation. What does 2 Timothy 2.15 say? <laughs> Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And you know, ever since all these new Bibles came out that took out the word study and took out the command to rightly divide, well, everybody quit studying and everybody quit rightly dividing. And that's why we end up with so much false doctrine and so much bad teaching. And so right now, there's a lot just because of what's going on over there. There's been a resurgence of interest in the topic. Whose land is that? Did God give that to the Jews? Is God all done with the Jews? Did everything from the Jews transfer over to the church? There's so much confusion about that. Things that we call uh, all millennial theology, anti-dispensational theology, replacement theology, covenant theology, all these theologies and their one main mission rooted in confusion and ignorance of the word of God is to somehow disown and disinherit the Jewish people and make the promises of God of none effect and to call God a liar in his word. So let's rightly divide today the promises to Abraham and his seed. But let's pray first. Father, we love you. Father, we thank you for imputed righteousness, for salvation by grace through faith. Oh, as was demonstrated in our father Abraham. Hallelujah. And God, thank you for your precious, perfect, holy Bible. Help us to rightly divide it today and understand exactly what you said, to who you said it, when you said it, and what you meant. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. Okay, so we're going to be spending a lot of time over in Genesis for this one. Let's go to Genesis chapter 13. Genesis chapter 13. God made some promises to this fellow Abram, later changed his name to Abraham. I use them inter interchangeably here. Okay, 13 and start in verse 14. And the Lord said unto Abram, after that Lot was separated from him, that's when they were they were on on the plains uh, uh, outside of uh, uh, Sodom and Gomorrah, and uh, they were fighting over the well water, and they just both just had too many men and too many cattle and stuff, and they were crowding each other. And Lot said, "Look, man, I'll go to the city." And Abraham stayed out there, right? So, uh, and the Lord said unto Abram, after that Lot was separated from him, lift up now thine eyes and look from the place where thou art northward southward eastward and westward okay okay so it's all right abraham from where you're standing look north south east and west okay you know he didn't tell him to look up <laughs> okay, right now we right now we are on the horizontal. Amen. He said, He said, look north, south, east, and west. Verse 15. God God says what he means, and he means what he says. Don't try to make it so, say something it don't say. For all the land which thou seest to 
thee will I give it, and to thy seed for ever. Does it need any commentary? He said, Abraham, look north, look south, look east, look west. All the land you see, I'm giving it to you and your seed forever. Verse 16, and I will make thy seed as the dust of the earth, so that if a man can number the dust of the earth, then shall thy seed also be numbered. Arise, walk through the land. This is, we're talking about a piece of dirt. We're talking about real estate here. This isn't spiritual. In the length of it and in the breadth of it, for I will give it unto thee. Pretty clear. Pretty clear. Amen. So, in uh, Genesis 14, 19, is where the right division first pops its head up. 14.19. Now, there's been an attack. Lot and his people got kidnapped. Abram goes to war. Goes, goes to get, goes to get his, his uh, nephew back and, and all that. And Abram runs into a guy named Melchizedek, the priest of the Most High God. And Melchizedek blesses him and here's what he says verse 8 14 18 and Melchizedek king of Salem brought forth bread and wine and he was the priest of the most high God and he blessed him and said blessed be Abram of the most high God possessor of what heaven and earth Heaven and earth. Okay. I just throwing two things in here. Right? He just told him that he's going to make his seed as the dust of the earth. And he said, look, north, south, east, and west. I'm giving you all this land. But now Melchizedek says, I'm not going to, you're not possessor just of the earth. He said, you're possessor of heaven too. Well, where does that come in? All right. Go to Genesis chapter 15. Starting in verse 1, after these things, right after all this happened with Lot and Melchizedek, after these things, the word of the Lord came unto Abram in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abram, I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. And Abram said, Lord God, what wilt thou give me, seeing I go childless, and the steward of my house is this Eleazar of Damascus? And Abram said, Behold, to me thou hast given no seed and lo one born in my house is mine heir That's what he's just saying there he says uh, uh i got this uh, uh servant eliezer of damascus and i got no kids so everything's gonna, pa gonna pass on to him in verse four and behold the word of the lord came unto him saying this shall not be thine heir the eliezer of damascus but he that shall come forth out of thine own bowels shall be thine heir and he brought him forth abroad, and he said, look now, where? Toward heaven. Amen. He said, look toward heaven. He didn't tell him to look north and south and east and west at some land. He said, look towards heaven and tell the stars if thou be able to number them. And he said unto him, so shall thy seed be. This is a spiritual seed. See, this is looking up and seeing the stars. You know, he didn't say anything. He didn't say anything, anything about a piece of dirt on the earth. He didn't say anything here about, about the land, the north, south, east, and west. He didn't say anything about the promised land that he's going give, to give to his seed. No, this is a spiritual. This is a spiritual thing. And uh, if you go to uh, Romans chapter 4, that's where he talks about this. Romans chapter 4. Verse 
And that this, this is the seed that Romans 4 is talking about. Not the seed we just read back in 13, where he said, look, north, south, east, and west, and it was the dust of the earth. No, Romans chapter 4 and Galatians chapter 3, they're talking about this, look up and see the stars. See, he Abraham was made possessor of both earth and heaven. Okay, so when we get over there to Romans and Galatians, this is the spiritual seed that we're talking about. So let's let's read about that. Uh, let's read uh, chapter 4. Let's read verses 9 through 13. Cometh this blessedness only upon the circum upon then upon the circumcision only or upon the uncircumcision also. This means Jews and Gentiles. For we say that faith was reckoned to Abram for righteousness. How then, how was it then reckoned when he was in circumcision or in uncircumcision? Not in circumcision, but in uncircumcision. And he received the sign of circumcision, a seal of the righteousness of the faith which he had yet being uncircumcised, that he might be the father of all them that believe, though they be not circumcised, that righteousness might be imputed unto them also. The father of circumcision to them who are not of the circumcision only, but who also walk in the steps of that faith, which our father Abraham, which had, of our father Abraham, which he had being yet uncircumcised. Verse 13, for the promise that he should be heir of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. And look, look back there to exactly where we were reading in that promise. And he said, Tell the stars if thou be able to number them. And he said to them, so shall thy seed be. Now look at the next verse. And you'll see this is clearly separating, rightly dividing this from the promise of the real estate and the land to the nation of Israel. Look at verse six. And he believed in the Lord and he counted it to him for righteousness. This is the heavenly seed. This is the seed of faith. This is that seed that is directly tied into imputed righteousness, salvation by grace through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, which was to come. This was the heavenly seed. This was the stars of heaven. All right. And then he talks some more about that in Galatians chapter three. Galatians chapter three, we'll read uh, verse eight first. And the scripture foreseeing that God would justify the heathen Gentiles through faith preached before the gospel unto Abraham saying, in thee shall all nations be blessed. Okay, that was, that was back in Genesis chapter 12. And we can look at that real quick before we finish reading here. This was the first, this was the first mention. This is before he, before he talked about the dust of the earth and the stars of the heaven. He made a general promise back in Genesis chapter 12. And he said, now the Lord, verse one, now the Lord said unto Abram, get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land that I will show thee and I will make of thee a great nation and I will bless thee and make thy name great and thou shalt be a blessing and I will bless them that bless thee and curse him that curse thee and in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. Amen. So that's what he's talking about right here. He says right here in uh, in verse eight. He said, we preached the gospel to Abraham, saying in the all nations. Shall be all nations blessed. I say, well, that doesn't sound like our gospel. Our gospel is the death, burial and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's our gospel. Repentance towards God, faith towards the Lord Jesus Christ. 
That's not in there. I know it's not the same gospel. Gospel means good news. This was the gospel, the good news that God gave Abraham. He didn't, he didn't preach to him the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. They, there, there's more than one gospel in the Bible. And that's what happens when you don't rightly divide. You, you, mix, you mix all this stuff up and you try to make salvation the same all through the Bible. And that's the problem here with this whole thing right here of mixing these two seeds. What, what people do that are in this replacement theology, covenant theology, amillennialism, etc. What they do is they go back to the literal promise in chapter 13, where God promised him that land, said, look, north, south, east, and west, I'm giving you all this land. Okay, walk up and down in it. I'm giving you this land, right? They go back to that verse, and they try to apply the spiritual verses here in Romans chapter 4 and Galatians chapter 3 and say, oh, see, no, no, no. That, he was talking about that, that, that seed is only spiritual. No, no, no. The, the spiritual seed comes in Genesis chapter 15 when he says, look up to the heavens and see the stars. And the next verse said, Abraham was the father of faith. Amen. That ties it into our gospel. So that's, that's the problem right there is not rightly dividing and smushing this stuff together. And you're trying to make both of these things one thing. And they're not, they're complete two completely different sets of promises told Abraham in different ways at different times. Amen. So they will try and apply what we just read in Romans and what we're getting ready to read in Galatians. They're going to go back and try to apply that to the land grant. And it says nothing to do with the land grant and the, and the perpetuity of the nation of Israel. What this has to do with is the spiritual heavenly promise to Abraham that all would be blessed through his seed. And we'll see who that seed is, the spiritual seed, in just a second. So he says in verse 8 that uh, he preached before the gospel unto Abraham, saying, In thee shall all nations be blessed. Well, how? Verse 14. That the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ. Amen. That we might receive, what? The promise of the Spirit through faith. Huh? Abraham believed God. And it was kind of him for righteousness. Right there in the verse with the stars look up and stars of heaven. Amen. And then verse 16. Now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. He saith not to seeds, but of many but of one and to thy seed, which is Christ. That's the spiritual promise. That's the spiritual promise to all. Abraham believed God. It was counted to him for righteousness. That's imputed righteousness. That's salvation by grace through faith. That's, that's the salvation we have today in the church age. And that it is, there's one seed. That's Christ. And when you, when you trust and believe in the Lord Jesus Christ by one spirit, are we all baptized into one body? You are placed in Christ. And when you get in Christ, you are part of that seed and all of the promise of, of, of salvation by grace through faith, eternal security, all that comes to you spiritually in Christ in the spiritual seed. And that's what he's talking about. Now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. This is the promises made to Abraham in Genesis chapter 15 when he said, look up and see the stars. The heaven, you possessor of heavens. This is not referring to back in chapter 13 where he said, look north, south, east, and west, and you're going to be as the dust of the earth. Things that differ are not the same. These are two completely different things. and. This is right division. Now, when you take these verses in Romans and Galatians and try to apply them to chapter 13 and the promise to the Jewish people of this land forever and ever, he said it over and over again, you're going to give you this land forever, 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 forever. And you'd go in and you try to take 
those promises from the nation of Israel, you better be careful because God will still bless those that bless Israel and curse those that curse Israel. And the greatest enemy that Israel ever had was the devil because the devil hates God and he know he can't do anything to God. So what he does, he attacks what God loves and God loves Israel and God has a plan for Israel. And when you look in the book of Revelation, when it all comes down and the Antichrist is here and Satan is manifest in the flesh, what does he do? He takes the whole world and he comes against that little nation, Israel, which will not be moved. Because why? Because the gifts and calling of God are without repentance. In other words, he ain't taking it back. So, again, we can read a little bit more on the, uh, the physical, because he speaks on that in, in chapter 15 as well, Genesis chapter, Genesis chapter 15, just in reinforcing the difference, setting, setting the two things opposite one another and rightly dividing and seeing the difference. So, look in Genesis 15, 13. Gives him a little bit of prophecy. And he said unto Abram, Know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs. Now, are we talking about one seed Christ here? No, obviously not. We're talking about his descendants, the Jewish people. Know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs, and they shall serve them, and they and they shall afflict them. This is when they went down into Egypt. They shall afflict them 400 years, and also that nation whom they shall serve will I judge, and afterwards shall they come out with great substance. And thou shalt go to thy fathers in peace and shall be buried in a good old age. But in the fourth generation shall they shall come hither, thither again. I mean, the Jews had come back here to this land for the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet full. And it shall, and it came to pass that when the sun went down, it was dark. Behold, a smoking furnace and a burning lamp that passed between those pieces. And in the same day, the Lord made a covenant with Abraham saying unto thy seed, have I given this land from the river of Egypt under the great river, the river Euphrates. This is physical. This is a land grant. This is, this is the seed, plural seeds, descendants of Abraham having a permanent land grant and promise of the nation of Israel. It's not the one seed Christ whom all the world by faith is blessed in, like in the heavenlies, like the stars. Two completely different things that if you don't, if you don't rightly divide, your theology is going to be a bunch of BS, Bible stupidity. You thought I meant something else, didn't you? Let's go on. Did God mean what he said? Jeremiah chapter 31. We'll close with this. Jeremiah 31, and we're going to read th verses 31 through 40. 31 through 40. Just, just believe the Bible. <laughs> it's, it's, hey, that's all God wants you to do. And, and that, that's why the devil's throwing out so many fake Bibles and everything says something different. So, so you can't be confident of the words and believe the words. And you think you got to go in and figure it out and make them say something else. And just, just believe what your King James Bible says. Just take God at his word. He know, he knew what he meant. He, and hey, and he meant what he said. And he wrote down what he wanted you to know. <laughs> Amen. So, uh, let's start in verse, uh, 31. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not with the church, <laughs> not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt. <laughs> Talking about Jews here. 
which my covenant they broke, although I was a husband unto them, saith the Lord. But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. The house of Israel. <laughs> After those days, saith the Lord, I will put my law in their inward parts, and I will write it in their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. And they shall teach no more every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me from the least of them unto the greatest of them, saith the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity, and I will remember their sin no more. Thus saith the Lord, watch it, thus saith the Lord, which giveth the sun for a light by day, and the ordinances of the moon and of the stars for a light by night, which divideth the sea when the waves thereof roar. The Lord of hosts is his name. Watch it. Thus saith the Lord, if heaven above can be measured and the foundations of the earth searched out beneath, I will also cast off all the seed of Israel for all that they have done, saith the Lord. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that the city shall be built to the Lord from the tower of Hananiel under the gate of the corner, and the measuring line shall yet go forth against it upon the hill Garab, and shall compass about Goath, and the whole valley of dead bodies and of the ashes and all the fields under the brook of Kidron, under the corner of the horse gate toward the east, shall be holy unto the Lord. It shall not be plucked up nor thrown down any more forever. God's pretty serious about that thing. Over and over and over and over in the word of God does he emphasize his irrevocable, immutable, one-sided, eternal covenant to the nation of Israel and that land and all that he's going to do with them. As you've got to rightly divide what's for Israel, what's physical, and what's spiritual, what's for the church. And if you don't rightly divide, you're going to be a Bible blockhead, and you're going to try to mush everything together, and you're going to just get a big old lump of doo-doo. So, with all this going on in the world, Satan is ramping up his attack against God's word, against his promises to the nation of Israel, because it's all coming down. It's getting ready to go. We're getting ready to get out of here. Then the Antichrist is going to come up, and the Antichrist is going to turn the whole world against Israel. And you see it happening already. You see it happening on our college campuses right now, where half the students are siding with the terrorists against the nation of Israel. Oh, it's the spirit of the age. It's the spirit of Antichrist already at work. He's about to be revealed. We're almost out of here. Stay encouraged and believe every single word of your King James Bible. You know I love you, and we'll see you next time.